Yeah, hello everyone. Just we are really sorry that we were experiencing some kind of troubles with the internet connection. Sometimes it happens, you know, we have those times when um, we have to overcome all the obstacles. So I do hope that we didn't make you wait for a long time. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us. Actually, um, we had another plan, but I'd like to start our session with uh, the welcome speech of the founder of SAR Teaching and Learning, Mr. Samad Samadov. So please. Uh, good evening, everyone. Actually, hello, everyone. Nice to have you all here. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, you are all uh, well. Uh, so I wouldn't like just to take a lot of time from you. And uh, I, I hope that uh, most of you are going to be satisfied with the, uh, with today's, actually. Uh, the founder. Can you hear me? Eva, can you hear me? Is everything okay? I don't know. So something, something again has happened with the internet, I guess. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me, actually? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Right? All right. So, uh, just a few words about our company. Uh, and I am Samad Ramizoglu. I'm actually a teacher, a teacher trainer, and I'm the founder uh, of SR Teaching and Learning, a five-year-old multinational company in the business of offering uh, teacher development courses and organizing international seminars, conferences across the globe. And at the moment, of course, we are uh, organizing uh, international webinars as well. So generally, we are based in Baku, Azerbaijan, and we are in the process of expansion. So uh, we we had uh, organized actually different international conferences, seminars, as I noticed before, and. Uh, we generally we cooperate with uh, the really leading organizations uh, in the world of ELT. And uh, uh, thanks to our dear Eva Yevgenia Tatareva uh, today, uh, we are going to have our next speaker uh, from Azerbaijan, uh, Pravina Ivazova. Uh, she's going to join us a few uh, minutes later. So, <clears throat> I do want to pass my words to Eva, so Eva, please. Again, welcome everyone, and I really uh, hope that you will all enjoy and uh, will be pleased with today's uh, webinar. Yeah, actually, uh, I'd like to share with you um, some of our announcements. So, the first part... Um, yeah, I do hope that, that you can see it clearly. So I'd like you to know that uh, we had different projects before, and uh, I hope that some of you heard about our course by SR Teaching and Learning. It was drama course. Actually, it was a course how to teach English through drama, and it was designed by Paul Harvey. It was a really successful course, and you can see the feedbacks. Thank you guys for participating in this course. We got just approximately 20 nice feedbacks and we are really proud and happy about it. Uh, it was about the past and what's, what's going to happen later. So right now, um, I'd like to announce that soon, actually next Monday, uh, the next course will be started by SR Teaching and Learning and Ukrainian Teacher Development Center, SUTA. It will be IELTS teacher training course by Samad Samadov. For those who doesn't know who is Samad Samadov, I decided to write down everything because, you know, he has so many titles. So he's an international TESOL trainer certified by TESOL Asia. Uh, he's international IELTS instructor certified by um, Queen TESOL Canada. International teacher trainer certified by International House Barcelona, as well as IELTS speaking examiner in Georgia, Estonia, and Turkey. And uh, you might have already heard him uh, during the conferences such as International TESOL TEFL Conference in Kyiv, in Baku, or IELTEFL 
conference in Kiev. So if you want to join this course, please just uh, contact us at sr.teachinglearning at gmail.com. Actually, that's not the end. Uh, on the 15th of June, um, we'll have another course in two, three days. We are going to launch uh, the registration process and you can join the course by Andrew Walkley. I suppose you know Andrew, he is uh, one of the co-founders of Lexical Lab and he's the co-author of many course books such as Innovations, Outcomes, Perspectives and Map, as well as, you know, his really famous book, Teaching Lexically, which is full of different principles principles and different activities. So if you want to join that course uh, before the registration uh, itself, you also can send us an email on srteachinglearning at gmail.com. Actually, the price for this course is $65, but you can pay in your uh, local currency. So um, the capacity of this course is only 25 teachers from across the globe. As we had, we had this practice before, we had this experience because uh, during drama course by Paul Harvey, we had teachers from different countries. It was so kind of international course. Uh, we had teachers from France, Ukraine, Georgia, um, and Russia as well. So please join this course. It will be really productive. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, and what else? Uh, I'd like to announce that soon we'll start online marathon. Uh, it will be the marathon uh, arranged by real teachers, teachers who teach in their classrooms. So I'd like you to join this marathon because those teachers decided to support other teachers across the globe, just to uh, inspire, to share their uh, real tips and tricks, let's say, to share the activities that work in their classrooms. So it would be great if you can join it. Actually, what you should do, you should go to the registration page. There you can find a button with agenda. You can press the button and find what they're going to speak about. And um, you can choose which session you would like to join because we are going to have speakers from different countries. You can see we have speakers from Ukraine. Uh, the, one of them is going uh, to deliver a speech on lexical approach itself. As I mentioned, Andrew Walkley, he's the the co-author of that teaching lexically book. Uh, also, we are going to talk about brain-based approach. Maybe you know about that um, WBT approach, whole brain teaching. Uh, we are going to discuss how to create wonderful lessons using movies and cartoons. Also, how to keep our students being motivated. You will see um, a teacher from Uzbekistan, actually, he is also a TESOL trainer, Saadat Tajibayeva, who is going to share with you her, her ideas, how to regroup students and what kind of, of activities you can use for these purposes. Um, also, we have the coaching techniques session as well. So it's really nice to hear from Alessia Yeremchuk. Uh, we'll have um, a teacher from Morocco, Yusuf Amalek, Tatiana Agiyanka from Ukraine. We'll, we'll see Svetlana Beckerman from France, also Tamila Delavera from Georgia, Natalia Paritska from Ukraine. You see, we have lots of different topics. Each session will be lasting for 20 minutes only, so it means they're not going to feed you with some kind of water. Let's say they're going to go through the real procedure, the real activities, real techniques, and please, please, please just come and join us. We'll be more than happy to have you. Check the agenda, choose that session you'd like to visit, or you can visit all the sessions if you want. The marathon itself will be completely free, so there is no need to pay any money. Just we, we really, we would like to share our ideas only uh, for free. So as you know, professional development with the SARS teaching and learning allows you to enhance your classroom practice, stay updated on research and trends in education and strengthen your content knowledge. So, um, and now I'd like to invite the main speaker for today's session, Parvina Evaza from Azerbaijan. You know, guys, uh, before we had different webinars with the SAR teaching and learning. And I should admit that before the most active country was Ukraine, but due to the registration that we got for this webinar, um, I have to say that this time Azerbaijan is the most active country. So you are welcome. Just guys, feel free, don't feel shy. 
type in the chat box what country you are from. Uh, just you can ask any questions. You can communicate with each other. If you have any questions, just put them into the chat box and then I will show them on the screen. And by the end of the session, we'll have several questions and I do hope that Parvina will answer your questions if you have some. So let me invite Parvina Evasova. Parvina? Parvina? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Right. So welcome to our webinar. And uh, I'm really happy, and I'm of course I'm very glad that uh, today uh, you, as local Azerbaijan teacher, uh, is going to uh, present a pretty productive topic that uh, I'm more than sure that is going to be really useful for all teachers, and they'll be able to use them in their own teaching practices. So, <clears throat> yes, uh, you can start. So, good luck, all the best. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, uh, I would like to begin, I'm, I would like to say that I'm really, it's a great honor for me to be here, to be a part of SR Teaching and Learning, and it's a great pleasure to be here with you. So, I hope that today, the one hour webinar that we'll spend together will be fruitful, and you will, uh, at the end of the webinar, you will leave the webinar with lots of um, important and useful uh, applications and resources. So, let's get started. So, I want to give some uh, brief information about myself. So I'm Parvina Ivazova. I'm as I mentioned uh, beforehand, I am from Azerbaijan Sumgayit and I've been teaching English as a foreign language for more than 10 years. And beginning from the uh, last academic year, I began teaching at an English stream. So if you would ask what is an English stream, it is a kind of education where all the subjects are taught in English. So we, I teach their science, math, English, uh, history, geography, and some other subjects too. So um, it is just uh, multitasking for me. Just uh, we are interacting uh, within 10 hours in a day in an English language. So um, and um, except this, I would say that uh, during during my teaching years, I've attended various kinds of seminars, workshops, trainings, and conferences. And I wanted, I always wanted to be a better teacher for my students. And in order to achieve my goal, I uh, did my best. And last year, I attended CELTA course and. Uh, I'm very glad that I um, finished that course with a passe degree. And here I am with you, so um, let's dive in the topic. So first of all, I would like to share with you the title of our topic. As you know, the title of our topic is Powerful Ways to Boost Teaching Online. So today we'll learn a bunch of uh, online resources and applications, and I hope that they, they will be quite practical in your teaching uh, life too. So, uh, and uh, here are our goals. So. Uh, at the end of this webinar, you will get familiar with the number of uh, online resources and applications. Also, you will witness that online resources and applications allow students to experience the language in the language learning process in a variety of ways, so not only one way. And at the end, you will witness that the number of online resources and applications ensures that there is something for every student. So. Um, before passing, before um, passing to the topic, I, I want to mention some quotes by some famous people. So one of them is by Dr. Ray Clifford. Uh, in 1983, he made uh, uh, such a statement. He said uh, such a, a, a statement that technology won't replace teachers, but those who use technology effectively will replace those who don't. 
As we can see, he said this uh, quote in 1983, but I would say that this quote uh, overlaps with our current situation. Because of COVID-19, lots of uh, teachers have to, do, you know, to de deliver lessons online. And uh, the teachers who had some ability with working with technology equipments, they could achieve their goals. But the ones who lacked in this sphere, they had some problems with dealing with the uh, technology equipment. So uh, the main reason why I chose uh, teaching um, how to boost uh, teaching online, uh, the resources and application, is that I want every teacher to be able to make their online lessons more effective, more engaging, and involve all the students in the learn language learning process. And another uh, quote is by Ignacio Estrada. It's a very also um, effective and impressive quote. Is if a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should change the way we teach. So it's very important. So in, here in this quote, we can see that we should approach to every child individually. So um, why we should learn different resources and applications? Because the, every child in, in, is individual. We should approach to every child's needs. We should uh, try to draw every child's uh, attention to our lessons. That's why if one method is not working, is, if one technology, if one uh, application or resource is not working for some students, maybe you will give it a try and use another application the resource. And by approaching individually to every student we may achieve our goal this is very important and nowadays we can see that not every student is motivated in learning uh, languages so we should uh, our, uh, like teachers we should crack our brain, brains and try to uh, think for try to think and find out new ways in order to teach uh, our students and in order to touch the hearts of of every student in our class. So I would like uh, to just uh, dive in in our uh, to uh, dive into the topic. First of all, I am definitely sure that most of you are familiar with this site. It is iselcollective.com, um, and it is a site that you can use freely. It doesn't demand any money, and you can uh, use it. Uh, ESL worksheets, ESL PowerPoints, video lessons, or whatever you want. You just uh, put, uh, search for and uh, you download it just for free. The main uh, demand of this site that you should have an account here. So uh, by creating account in this site, you can download as much uh, worksheets, as much uh, PowerPoints as you want. I just wanted uh, to show one example from this site. As you can see on the screen, it is a board game so i really um, like um, board games and whether it is in class or in while teaching online i use them a lot uh, and we know that uh, while teaching in class we have dice in order to play this board game but um, while teaching online we lack this equipment so what we can do i uh, advise you to use this site it is freeonlinedice.com so if you want to play this kind of board game in your lessons but you don't know how to manage it how to control the process so you can use this online uh, roll die uh, online dice and by just clicking to the button you can see here by just clicking to the button you can uh, roll it and uh, the face that it's um, lands on you can uh, by uh, taking this number you can uh, just uh, uh, begin moving from the starting point so you can use it as a uh, group work or you can use a prayer work or you can use it as an individual work it depends on the uh, teacher's lesson plan and uh, another option here is flip a coin so if you are choosing between two students, you can just uh, push this button and in the end it will land on either on heads or tails. So it's a great option for the teachers who want to apply online uh, board games to their lessons and uh, you can use it uh, properly uh, during your online lessons. And another option is, for example, um, while uh, being online, it's an it causes, for example, it caused uh, some difficulty for me to choose students 
names for example uh, sometimes you forget whose name you already named or who want who you, you want to uh, just call so what you do here is a great site it is a wheel of names what you can do here in this uh, box here as you can see i've written down some three names here so you can write down as many names as you want so write down here the, your students' names. And this wheel, it will be divided as many parts as you want. And the colors of the wheel will be uh, will differ. So you just, after writing down the, here the names of the students, you just spin the wheel. And to whomever it will uh, land on, uh, you will call that student's, uh, student and will work with that student. So it's a great option for working online. It is Wheel of Names. So there are also some other uh, uh, tools to use too. So one of them is this uh, Wheel of Names. So um, I, this uh, man mind map maker is one of my favorites too so we know that uh, during our in-class lessons we just uh, in order to begin the lesson we have leaving part and in order to motivate the students in order to draw each student's attention to the lesson what do we do uh, we just do something like this we write the central idea we write the ideas that are connected with this central idea and how we can do it during online lessons. You can use this application, it is Mind Map Maker. So, for example, in last days I taught um, life processes in science lesson. So, um, I can write down in the central idea, life processes. And later on, I can ask the students to brainstorm and to come up with the ideas that uh, they think that are related uh, to these uh, central idea life processes. So I can expand it as much as I want. These are the main branches. For example, I have one central idea here, and they are the main, the, uh, main branches. And also these main branches, I can divide into sub branches. So what can I do here? I can change the background color. I can change the font face, size, and the colors of the branches. And uh, in the end, if I am uh, done with this, I can save it. So this is a great tool. At the beginning of the lesson, you can just brainstorm. Uh, you can come up, and students come up with their ideas. You can brainstorm and you leave it here. And at the end of the lesson, you can, after just uh, summarizing your lesson, you can return to this mind map maker and see whether your students were correct, were, what ideas were relative to these topics, what, uh, topic, what ideas were irrelevant, and you can, in the end, summarize your ideas. And one more thing that uh, is important here is that you can assign the uh, this um, mind map maker and assign it as a homework for example imagine that let's assume that you are giving your students one topic uh, and you for example reading uh, some story you may ask your students to uh, write in the central idea the name of the story what are the main what is the main idea of the story what are the uh, details of the story who are the characters of the story what is the plot so you, they may expand this mind map maker as much as you want so it's a, another type of assigning homework you can use it as a homework too so give the students this uh, as a homework they will complete it and save it and later on share it with you so mind map maker is a great tool you may use it not only uh, online while teaching online but also in class too and another application canva i use actually um, other options of canva but this option is also quite handy and usable so we have here it's another version of mind mapping so you can he see here templates the uh, ready-made templates here what you can do you just choose one of them and later on inside of these circles you can see here you can add your own ideas add your own uh, thoughts that is relevant to your own topic so you can uh, expand it and you can make a mind map uh, using this uh, site too it is canva you can uh, use it as online and you can download it and later share it 
So uh, if you want to uh, use map mind mapping uh, tool, so uh, this tool is also great uh, for you while teaching online. Now, and I want you uh, to just crack your brains and uh, tell me, maybe you can write down in the comment box, what uh, kind of uh, dictionaries uh, you use in your daily life or teaching life. So I'm talking about uh, definition, uh, dictionaries. Uh, so um, most of us, um, me too, for example, we are using Cambridge Dictionary or Oxford Dictionary or Longman or Merriam-Webster. We use a number of uh, dictionaries. But what is the, here you can see it is visual words. What is the difference between this dictionary and with the dictionary that we are used to use? So uh, this dictionary, what is the difference? Now you will see it is not your granddad's dictionary. So it is a dictionary for modern world. It is a modern dictionary. Now, here in the next slide, you will see what is the modern part of this dictionary. So, uh, for example, in this uh, search bar, I wrote the word school. And you can see, as we usually uh, experience while searching the words in dictionaries, we can uh, see their uh, lists of words. But here, in this uh, dictionary, we don't write any lists of words. We cannot see any list of words. We can see something like cluster. So we can see here school. Okay, so uh, here we can see that it shows whether it is noun or verb or adjective or adverb. And later on, these lines, what are the relationship between these lines here is listed here. So when I approach, the cursor to one of them, I can see that here it is written. Uh, for example, one of the meanings of the schools is an educational, educational institution's faculty and students. The school keeps parents informed, the whole school turned out for the game. So you can see here the definition and examples. So it is a, another way to uh, just um, attract your students' attention to uh, finding, to searching for the definitions. So instead of seeing there some lists of words, they will see something like this, something like a cluster, and it will draw their attention. So you may use it as an online tool too, and uh, it will be quite handy and I think quite useful. And another one, so, I want to begin with the online application that we can use in order to assess our students and uh, quiz-like applications, I call them. So one of them is Mentimeta. So uh, you can write in your chat box, have you used Mentimeter before? So if you, do you have, uh, have you experienced anything with using this uh, application? So if yes, you can ask yes, answer yes, no, or maybe uh, you don't know. You, have, you don't know whether you use this Mentimeter or not. So um, you may write down there, uh, so have you used Mentimeter before? Do you, are you familiar with this application? So today I will give uh, uh, some information about this Mentimeter too. So let's get started. So when you open the site Mentimeter, you will face with this uh, kind of page. So you can see here Mentimeter. And what we have here, what, why do we need this Mentimeter? It is creative, uh, create interactive presentations and meetings wherever you are. So it's a great tool for uh, adding variety to your lessons, um, especially your online lessons. So what do you do here? I will just uh, try to explain it step by step, and I will give you uh, create uh, some idea in your brain about the usage of this site. And later on, on your own pace, you may explore the inside of this site, and you may uh, find out various features of this site too. So let's get started. So first of all, we have to sign up for this site. So if you don't have any account at this side, you may sign up here. So we have here sign up button. So we sign up here. Uh, it's, you should have here an account. If you are a teacher, 
you should have here an account. If you are not a teacher, you are a student, you don't need to have an account here. But teachers should have, it's a must, should have an account here. So they sign up here, they create their own um, page. So you can, uh, you, after you sign up in, to this side, you uh, are facing with this kind of uh, web page. So what you have here, home part, in home part, we have here new presentation, we have here a new folder. So in the new presentation, you may create new folder and add this presentation inside of this folder, or just without creating any folder, you may create uh, new presentations. So when you are, you see here new presentation, you just click on it. You, you want to uh, create new presentation and you just click on it what you come up with, you come up with this page. What options here do you have? So as you can see here, if you want to make a new presentation, uh, you may have these options. You may have multiple choice questions, word cloud that I really admire and really love, open-ended questions, scales, ranking, uh, image choice, question and answers, and so on. So uh, while print preparing a presentation, you will, first of all, you will have an idea what I'm going to do uh, with this task. If you want to create a multiple choice task, you just click on it. You will choose the type of your presentation. Yeah, you click, clicked on it. So it shows the air options and multiple choice. And here on this uh, right bar, right side, you do what? You write your question. So here you can see your question. Here you are writing down your question. What you can do, you can add here also images. So you can export, import it from your uh, computer or you can download it from internet. So what you do, you just write the, down the question and you, you may attach an image to it too. And later on, you have options here. You can see option one, two, three. And you may add yourself. If you want your multiple choice uh, question to be uh, four uh, uh, variants, so you may add as much as you want. It depends on you. So you are uh, writing down questions. You are writing down your answers, your options. So uh, later on, when we scroll down, we can see here how do you want to see your results? So if I want to see my results at the end of the test, if I want to see it uh, like bars, it will show it like this. If I want it to see it like donut, uh, it will be in this shape, pie or dots. So it depends on your wish. How would you, would you like to see your results at the end of the uh, uh, test? So extras, what extras we have? Show correct answer. So if you want to show correct answer to the question, so you should tick here. So if without ticking, if you don't tick to this part, so you won't be able to see the uh, correct answers. So show the correct answers, show results in percentage, and let participants choose multiple choice or options. So it depends on you. If you want these options to work for you, you will just click on them. And one more thing that uh, this site is for free, but not all the options are free here. So if you want to use the uh, these sites options uh, like in a wide range, you should pay for it. But uh, if you want to use the limited uh, part of this site, you, it's just free. Um, you may do whatever you want. So in order to create a new presentation, you are allowed to have five slides. So till five slides. More than five slides, it means that you have to pay it. But uh, five, uh, less than five, it's okay. So you're in one slide, I chose multiple choice. I, chose, I wrote down questions. I wrote down uh, showing answers, options. Okay, I did everything and I'm ready. So what do you do uh, later on? Uh, later on, uh, if I prepared my presentation, what I do, I put here present part, so present it. So if I click on the present part, it means that students will be able to do this uh, task. Okay, so I, uh, I present it and uh, students will write down the code of this uh, 
presentation. So they will write down the, uh, here you can see the site menti.com. Here they will open this site uh, as they don't need any kind of account there. They will just uh, type in on their phones or on the computer. They will just type in menti.com. And in Mentimeter, uh, you will, they will come up with this uh, page. And here in the code part, they will write down the code of the uh, presentation. So they write down the code of the presentation and later on they press the button submit. And they are, after pressing the button submit, they uh, see the question here. So as you can see here, what is Magellan's profession? I put uh, the question like this, or what is Magellan's profession? And here you can see we have three options. So what the students do, they just read the question, choose one answer, and later on submit, that's all. And in the end, in my page, on my uh, account page, I can see the results of the students. So I can see uh, only one uh, participant we had here. That's why I can see only one result. But in your actual lessons, you may have 10, 15, or 20 students. So uh, they, the percentage will, of course, differ in this situation. And the number of participants will differ too. So uh, this is one option. You can use mentimeter.com uh, as an um, online education uh, source and application. And what I liked here uh, in this uh, site, you can change the uh, color of the presentation if you, don't, if you don't want it to be just only white. And I like uh, word clouds. So um, I know that some of you are familiar with this. Um, term word cloud maybe some of you don't know so what you can create word clouds too here so what do you do again the same procedure so you are writing down the, your question here on the question part you are writing down your question or you you may write just write down the any idea that you want uh, this word cloud to be created so later on you have entries per participant so if you want your student to choose only to write down only three words so you write here three if you want it uh, four you will put here four till ten up to ten you are allowed to write down your ideas so you're putting your question you are allowing every participant to have as much word that they want you are just writing beforehand and later on after finishing it you have code here like 27, 56 and 10. This code, again, in menti.com, students write down this code and submit it, and students write their, their options. So I chose here light processes, and one of the students wrote here three words. So growing, reproduce, reproducing, and moving. So these are the parts of light processes. So again, the same procedure. I am creating a new presentation. After creating new presentation, I press the button present, and that's all. Students can go to the site menti.com, write down the uh, numbers, the code of the uh, presentation, and that's all. They are ready to type in their words that they think that they are relevant for this topic. So they are writing down the topic, and when there are lots of students, not only one student, this word cloud will become bigger and bigger and they will be uh, just in cha chaotic form. So it's not only in one form. So um, it's not important, one thing I should mention, that it's not important that all the ideas will be correct. So it's great that they, it's kind of brainstorming. So they may come up with the, some uh, irrelevant ideas or irrelevant options maybe. So it's okay. They may write down as much things, um, as many things that they want, and uh, it doesn't have to be relevant to the topic all the time. So they are writing down their options, what do they think, and they are creating word cloud, and teacher then shows this word cloud, shares this word cloud with other students, and uh, it becomes a great uh, tool uh, for the teacher to use. So I like this uh, mentimeter.com and I found it uh, quite useful. Maybe in your uh, 
beginning maybe from t tomorrow, you may apply this uh, mentimeter.com in your uh, real lessons too. So, as you can see here, uh, I may save it. Uh, the, what is the best feature of this application is that it is saving automatically. So you don't have to all the time save it. For example, uh, let's say that uh, you forgot saving it and um, later on when you come back to this site, you see that all the things are saved in your account. And you may share it, you may share the... Uh, in this form, you can see that it's shared with the participation and presentation sharing. So you may share the code of this uh, presentation. You may share the link. Uh, let's say that you want to share, copy paste the links and you are copying the link and pasting to the students groups. Maybe they have uh, some WhatsApp group or Telegram group. They may uh, add their, the link and students can enter and uh, take part in the uh, assessment. And you, it has also a QR code and you may download it anytime that you want. That's all from Mentimeter. Uh, so uh, I advise you, I strongly advise you to uh, check this site in your daily life and um, in, use it. Uh, you will find it quite usable. Another uh, site, another application is Socratic. So um, maybe, uh, I don't exactly, maybe some of you have ever um, used this uh, site. If you have used, uh, please feel free to comment in your comment uh, box and uh, write down whether you find this uh, site useful, effective, um, or what is your experience uh, with using this site. So um, I would like to give some information about this site too. So what is the Socratic? It looks like Mentimeter, it looks like Kahoot, it looks like Quizlet, so they have the same uh, aim um, in the end. So what is what you can see here, this is the welcoming page of the site, and we have here login part. So in login part, we may have uh, the teacher login and student login. So teacher login, the teachers should have here an account. This is very important. Teachers should create here an uh, account. So they will sign up for free. But students, again, like in Mentimeter, they don't need any account. Only teachers need an account here. They will create an account. And later on, they will log in through teaching login. And when they, they will log in, they will come up with this uh, page. Here you can see, for example, my name is here, it's Parvina, and here, uh, Parvina, and here in the middle you can see here, rule name. So, uh, what is uh, the difference between Mentimeter and uh, Socrative? That in Mentimeter it demands code. So all the time the codes are changing, but in Socrative you don't need any code. You just need to uh, create a rule and it's your room, you just write uh, your new room name. And all the time when the students enter, they are just writing the same room name. So you don't have to create all the time codes. So they, here in my room name is Evazova. And every time, all the time, if I want to change my room name, what I go, I go to the rooms part page, here you can see, I can go there, I can change my room name as well. So, uh, let's get started with uh, exploring the different features of this site. What you can do here, you can see here launch in, in this menu bar. You can see launch, quizzes, rooms, reports, and results. So, uh, let's begin with the quizzes part. So, what I can do in the quizzes part, uh, as a teacher, if I want uh, to uh, create a new quizzes, so I will go to the quizzes part, part, and what do I do? I come up with this um, page, and here I have add quiz. So if I want to create a new quiz, I will go to this part, and I will click on add quiz. So I clicked on add quiz, and this page opens. So what do I have here? Here I have the name of the quiz. So uh, currently it's not named. So by clicking on the pencil here, I'm just writing down the name of the quiz. So I wrote down the name of the quiz. And later on, I have here three options. 
If I want to make a multiple choice, I am choosing this one. If I want to you make question type like true, false, I'm choosing this one. Short answer, I'm choosing this one. So it depends on my uh, desire, uh, on my wish, uh, on my intention, on my lesson, go lesson goal and planning. So I'm just choosing one of them. And if I want others uh, to be able to see my quizzes, my work, so I enable sharing here in this part, which is activated. But if I don't want anyone to see it, if Barbina, I don't want to miss Barbina, I'm yeah. so sorry to interrupt you, but we have several questions and I think it would be better to answer some yes. of them right now. So we have the first question is, if you can see the screen. So the question is, between Mentimeter, Kahoot and Secreti, which do you prefer? Do you use all of them for different purposes? If so, which ones do you use and for what purpose? So, um, as I mentioned beforehand, Mentimeter, uh, it has more options. So in there you can uh, create uh, even uh, for reading, for example, we know that in reading we have some titlings parts. So even for reading, I find Mentimeter uh, more uh, handy and more practical because types and uh, styles are more there. This one is more effective. But uh, Socrative, uh, what, how you can it would say that this limits students' entrance to the site all the time. So only uh, I will come up to that part. For example, in Socrative, um, only the, if the teacher opens, launches the task, students can enter. The students can enter and do the task. And in Socrative, there are only three uh, three options: the multiple choice, truth, and short answer. Three of them. in Kahoot, it, it is also a kind of application that you can use. And, um, but what what is the disadvantage? I will say that one disadvantage is that uh, as it is, uh, it has pro version. You can use only two options of. It's, so if you want to create a quiz, you can create multiple choice or uh, true false. So only two of them. So the rest of them are for money. You, so you have to pay money. But uh, if you want to create some uh, multiple choice or uh, create uh, some true false, it's okay for you. Uh, so the procedure actually in all of them the same, and uh, they are all of them are. Um, uh, increasing the desire, the wish of the students to be engaged in to the lessons. And as an online uh, tool, I advise all the teachers from here to test all of them. So I may find Mentimeter better than others. Maybe there are some teachers who find a Kahoot better than others or Socratic. So it depends on the students, uh, um, on the teacher's desire to use these tools. So um, it's free. So they, after this session, or they may go and explore the inside of the sites, and um, they will find the relevant uh, one for themselves. So I find Mentimeter more uh, okay. Thank better you. than I do hope we've done everything okay yeah. for Mr. Robot Rock or Miss Robot Rock 0101. Okay, thank you, Parvina. Let's continue. Yeah, I will. I will continue. So, um, how many minutes uh, I, we are left? Because I have lot, got lots of slides. Just let's say we have half an hour. Half an hour. It's okay. It's okay. So I think that I'll we'll be able to end uh, till that uh, time. So um, as I mentioned here, you can choose one of the options. So multiple choice, true, false, short answer, and later on, uh, later on, what you do. You, for example, I chose here multiple choice. So what I have to do here, again, like in Mentimeter, I have to write down the question. First of all, I am writing down the name of the quiz. And then I am writing down the question and options. And you can see here, I have here four options. I may add answer. If you want, you may add answer. Uh, for example, you may uh, make it E, D, uh, D, E, F, as much as you want. And in the downpour 
part, you can see here an explanation if you like. So if you want, at the end of this task, if you want to add explanation, it's you, free, you are free to add. If you don't want to add explanation, don't add anything. Just write the question and write down the options. You can attach again the photos, the images that you want, it doesn't matter, and write down uh, the, all the options. And also in this part, you may put uh, attach here an image to your quiz. So if you want your quiz to be opened with a kind of image, you, you are free to add here. And later on, after doing it, you are done. Uh, you are saving. I didn't show that part. You are saving and exiting. So you are saving this uh, quiz after you are um, making maybe five, six, seven, or ten qu questions, and later save and exit. Let's say that we have created uh, the quiz. We have here some ten questions, and I'm finished. I'm saving and exiting. So how I would use this one? Now we are passing to the practical part, working with the students. So what we do in order to activate this task, because this task won't be activated all the time, only the teacher should come to her page and launch the quiz. So as you can see in the launch part, menu part, we have here launch the quiz. So only the teacher can launch the quiz. So the teacher enters here, she launches the quiz, this part, and after launching the quiz, here it shows the options. What you can do, choose question, quiz. So um, I have here only one option, but uh, the, you may have, you may uh, create some 10 or 15 quizzes, and you may choose which of them would you like to use uh, in today's lesson, let's say. So I'm choosing, for example, here I have only one option, propositions of time. And here I come, I already chose my quiz. Look here, it's the propositions of time. So I can change it if I'm not satisfied, if I don't want it. I, if, I have, uh, if I change my mind, I can uh, change it. And here in the second part, we have choose delivery method and settings. So how do you want this uh, feedback? How do you want uh, to get them? Do you want to have instant feedback, open navigation, or teacher paste? Which one would you like? You are choosing one of them. And on the right part, require names. If you want your students' names to be visible on the screen in the results part, you should activate this button. So we have here required names. Shuffle questions. If you want them to be shuffled questions or answers, uh, you may activate them. If you want show question feedback, you may activate. Show final score, one attempt. So one of the things that uh, here, it, um, the one of the greatest options, it, it may have uh, let you to have one attempt. So if you want it, uh, your if you want your student to have only one attempt, so you should activate this button too. So they can't do the, uh, the this quiz for the second time. So what do we do? We have done with this part. Let's say let's assume that we have chosen, we activated the parts that we want, and we are pressing the start button. Okay, so in real uh, uh, part in your in your real lessons, you will press the start button, and here we come up with the work with the students part. So, as a teacher, I created my quiz. I did everything. I am ready. I launched the quiz, and now we are passing to the students. So, what the students do? You have here, as we mentioned beforehand, we have student login. In student login, students don't need any account. Students only need here to write room name. So as my name is Eva, uh, my room name was Eva Zava. So they write down here only room name. They are writing down room name and they are pressing join button. If I activate it, uh, show the names of students, students write down after this, they write down their names. If I didn't activate it beforehand, so they don't write down their names. So first of all, they write the room name. Later on, uh, they, they may write their names and join. And they come up with this page. For example, here I had, uh, I give one example. So here on Saturday afternoon, so is it a true sentence or full sentence? Student choose one of the options 
and submit answer. That's all. So they are writing down only room name, teacher's na room name. Then if, the, if it is required, they write down their names. And in the end, they do the task and submit their answers. That's all. And at the end, teacher finishes the task. And she, here she can see that, like we teachers can see the results. So in the results part, also we have some buttons. So if I want to see student's name, so I will activate show names. If I want to see the answers, I will activate show answers. And as you can see, the answers are shown here. One option here is showing in uh, percentage. So it is 100%. And class total. So uh, let's assume that we are in real lesson. I have 10 students. Each student enters the room, uh, wrote down their names, and they did all the tasks uh, and submitted their answers. This list will be bigger or longer. And class total will differ according to the student's answers. Okay, so uh, this is the result part, and where we can see this result part, we can see here in the result part. Later on, these results will be saved in the reports part. So in the reports, if you want, uh, after leaving this uh, site, if you want to come back and see the results of the students again, you can go to the reports part. So we have done the launch uh, quizzes. We have uh, now we have here space race. So what is space race? Uh, space race is a little from the quiz. Um, it is a kind of uh, competition between groups. So in space race, we are, are divided. Uh, students are divided into two groups. So uh, depending on their um, uh, quick feedback to their questions and depending on the correctness of their questions and uh, these uh, spaceships will move and which groups uh, spaceship will reach uh, the end first that group will win so it's another great uh, uh, option that you can use in Socrative and in order to add this competitive root, uh, spirit to their to your lessons so if you don't want them to uh, use this site or use this quiz individually, if you want to, uh, them to work in groups, so you may use space race option. Not quizzes option, but you may uh, use space race uh, option too. And in the end, we have your exit ticker. So um, this part, third part, in the launch part, uh, we uh, spoke about quiz, we spoke about space race and exit ticker. So, this ticket, um, I got familiar with this ticket uh, some a year ago, and one of the uh, one of my colleagues uh, she uh, gave some information about exit ticket. Um, it's a different online version of exit ticket, and I advise the teachers to use this one. So uh, mainly and mostly, uh, we can't be sure whether the students understood the things that uh, we uh, retold or uh, understood all these um, parts of the lessons. We are not sure. So what we can do at the end of the lesson in order to be sure that, okay, everything is great, students got the things uh, that I explained, what I can do, this is one option, it is exit ticket. What we do here? We have, in exit ticket quiz, we don't prepare anything. So it is just ready-made. You just clicked on exit ticket and you, are, you can see this screen. So the first question is, how well did you understand today's material? So again, students enter the room, they write down their names if uh, required, and later on they choose one of these options. If the students understood what they have been told during the lesson, they write, totally got it. If they not, um, somehow they write pretty well, C, not very well, and D, not at all. So they may choose one of these options. This is the first uh, step. And then the second step, what does they do? What did you learn in today's class? This is a great question for students to recall their uh, knowledge and to recall and to try to think, okay, what uh, have I learned from today's lesson? So they think about it and write down their answers. So what did you learn in today's class? And the last question is, 
please answer the teacher's question. So teacher, I'm a teacher, at the end of the lesson, I can write down the question. If you are online teaching, you can write down on Google or in PowerPoint or in Active Inspire, uh, wherever you want. So you write down one uh, question and you ask your students answer this teacher's question. So in their, using their uh, phones or using their um, uh, iPads, uh, or other uh, computer, they write down their ideas, they write down uh, the teacher's answer to the teacher's question. So it is the exit ticket quiz, and uh, later on, after the, all the students are done with it, so the teacher presses the uh, finish button, and that's all. And that's how the teacher finishes the lesson. That's a, one part of the lesson that uh, I find it quite... Uh, interactive and also uh, it can be sometimes the answers can be um, funny so uh, sometimes the answers can differ depending on the students and in the end the teacher has a certain um, information about what the students grasp what the students learn during the lesson process so uh, it's a great uh, tool you may use it in your online uh, lessons uh, too and also in your real lessons too now I have part of the Kahoot. I'm uh, definitely sure that uh, most of you um, are familiar with this um, application, but I put here uh, for some teachers who maybe have heard about it, but have no idea how to use it. So it will be um, some kind of uh, tutorial for them. So in Kahoot, it's also a kind of um, Quizlet or Socrative or Mentimeter. What do we do here in Kahoot? So we open the page, first of all. Here we can see the page. We have here options, three options, like one play, sign up, and login. If I'm a student, I choose the play option. So I'm playing the game or I'm doing the quiz. If I'm a teacher, I should sign up first of all if you are new here new in this side if you don't have any account here you should sign up first of all you first of all i sign up okay after signing up um uh, i did all in the procedures i have um filled all the things now i have here uh, an account i have here my home page what do I have here? I have here information about myself and what part I do need. I need just this part, create and share. Okay, so what do I do? If I want to create a new Kahoot, I just press the create part. I uh, see this page. It is a create a new Kahoot. So as you can see, the uh, options that have a crown here on the top, it means that it is pricey. So you have to have this pro version of this program. So you, you have to pay money for this. So if you don't want to pay money, you can use the free versions of them. So one of the free, free versions is creating new Kahoot. We pressed on new Kahoot and we are uh, seeing these options. So as I said beforehand, uh, that the difference between Socrative Mentimeter and Kahoot, uh, Kahoot, the uh, question types in Kahoot is limited. So if I haven't got um, any uh, pro account here, so if I didn't upgrade my account here, I have want to use this site for free. So uh, I can use only two options. I can use quiz or true false question type. But this question like open-ended, puzzle, slide or poll, they are uh, not for free. So uh, I don't use them. I just use only two options like quiz and true false. So in quiz part, um, let's say that I chose quiz part, what comes out? This page. So in quiz part, what do I do? Here on the top, I have question. So here should I, I should write the title of the question. And here in the middle, I can add some picture or photo related to the question not uh, irrelevant, but, but related to the topic. For example, I wrote here, who is Magellan? For example, yesterday in our um, Oxford Discovery book, we learned about the, um, we learned about Magellan, and 
I want today to test my students. What do I do? I just put some questions in Kahoot and ask them to write down the answers. So who is Magellan? So here I can put the photo of Magellan. I can uh, drag and drop it from my computer, upload image or image library or YouTube link. It depends on your wish. And here I have also time limit. So what I, uh, here, normally it is 20 seconds. So, but you can lower it. You can make it 5, 10 seconds or make it more. And point section, you can see point. You may increase the points. And answer options. You can see all of them are on the left uh, part. Single select. So if you want uh, to give the correct answer only one correct answer, you will choose single select. But if you have more than one uh, option, so you may choose two uh, multiple uh, select answers. So uh, I write down. Here the title of my quiz. Here I put, uh, let's assume that I put here photo. And now I have to write the options. So I'm writing the options. While writing the options, uh, you can see here circle parts. If my uh, correct answer, for example, this one is in Explorer. So if we, this one is my correct answer, I put tick here. But the others are not my correct answer, so I don't touch them. Okay, so only the answer that is correct, or maybe the answers, it depends on the question. So uh, you, you should tick, put tick uh, at the end. And later on, if you are done with the uh, quiz, if you are finished your quiz, what do you do? You have done everything. You put your question, images, uh, your options, uh, put it, uh, you have uh, put all the, uh, your desirable number of uh, qu uh, questions. So you, if you have finished with it, you press the button done, and that's all. And at the finishing touches, you put the name to your uh, code, you put the name to it, and description, description is optional. You may put or not put, it depends on your wish. And later on, you continue. You press the button continue, and yeah, the Kahoot is ready to be played. Now it is ready to be played by your students. So not use them, it depends on you. And what we have here, we have here, I created my Kahoot. Uh, and after creating my Kahoot, I see this Kahoot in my home page. So discover the world. I put the name like this, discover the world, the title. And here you, I can see my uh, Kahoot, I, I can see my quiz here. And then later on, if I want uh, it to activate it, I just press the button play. So in play part, I can see two options. One is for teach part, one is for assign part. For teach part, this is as you can see, it is great for virtual classroom. So if you want uh, to have a live game together with your learners, so it's a great option. Assign, you may ask your students to do it as a homework at uh, their own pace. So without hurrying, uh, uh, just by themselves and uh, not uh, adding any competition into this uh, option. So if you want to add a competition, if you want your students to compete with each other, other you may uh, choose your teach button so what do you do you choose the teach button and later on uh, we have two options to play the kahoot is it classic or team mode so if you want uh, during your online teaching you want your students to play uh, separately not in team you choose the classic but if you want your students to uh, make a group and to work in groups and uh, to make a team. So you may choose here team mode. So you are free to do it. Uh, it depends on your uh, lesson planning. And later on, let's assume that I choose a uh, classic uh, version. And here, uh, I didn't uh, say it beforehand, here we have uh, the code of Kahoot. So uh, like in Mentimeter, we had Kahoot. But in Socrative, we didn't have uh, any code. We had only room name. In Kahoot, we have the code. And we write down the code here, in the code part. And after writing the code, I press the button Enter.
And later on, I put my nickname or my real name. It depends on your tree. So students write down their names. If they are playing in, with their team, they may write down the, their team's name. So uh, it's free. So students write down their names here. OK, go. So we are going. So now you are in. This is what the student sees in her, uh, on her screen or on his screen. So you are in, see your nickname on screen. And the teacher's screen will be on the teacher's computer. So teacher shares the screen. And on teacher's computer, if the student sees uh, her name, it's OK. So it means that uh, she's included into the game. So and this is the. Uh, after uh, the student sees her name, so the teacher uh, checks all the students if they are here. And later on, uh, the uh, teacher begins, uh, starts the uh, quiz. So here you can see the ready-made quiz. It is who is Magellan. And here we can see the seconds and the options. This is on teacher's screen. But on student's screen, it is visible like this. So on student's screen, uh, students uh, cannot see any options, any questions. They can see only these uh, four shapes. So they, looking at the teacher's screen, they choose the correct option, and that's all. And later, the results are shown on teacher's screen. And as we had here only one participant, uh, and the, this participant answered the question correctly, and we can see that one of the uh, students uh, succeeded in this task. And what I can do later on, later on, if I, uh, the students uh, are done with the task, later the students can see the results uh, their results on teacher's screen. So you can see here, for example, I was the only player here. So uh, you can see my results here. So, and later on, uh, game over. So we did, uh, we finished. How can I uh, save, uh, how the results are saved here? I can view report, I can save the results, or I can play game or I can uh, make a new game. And game results i can download these game results and or save to drive so i downloaded this result on my computer so uh the downloaded version is this one it is downloaded in microsoft excel uh, program so you can see here when it is played who played uh and what is the percentage and how many uh points uh, are gained during this game and so on so you can see all the uh, results here or uh, it's not mandatory that you should uh, save the results. It should be visible on your own uh, teacher's homepage. This is from my real class. Uh, last year, we um, took part in one competition. And there, we uh, had the um, a kind of challenge. We had to prepare Kahoot game. And with our students, we had to play this game. So you can see that we are um, playing in team mode, we have two teams here, and we are uh, separately, teams are playing, and you can see that how happy they are. So uh, these kind of applications, uh, I would say that are, is not, uh, are, are not only effective in online classes, also they are uh, quite effective in in-class too. Uh, so we, uh, this is from a real class uh, experience, and this you can see here, I am this uh, controlling everything there and uh, that's all from Kahoot so uh, Kahoot uh, Socrative and Mentimeter and uh, they have nearly the same uh, options uh, in order to add variety to your lessons in order not to stick only one application you may use this one these three ones uh, various uh, times of your lessons uh, and uh, you may feel free to use them with the free options of these applications and especially for learning uh, teacher um, English language teachers this application is quite handy too is learning apps.org so this application and this application you may also create your own tasks your own quizzes and it gives you a wide uh, range of choices. So you may choose uh, any of them. And you may choose, um, uh, now you will see 
which uh, applications, which uh, task types uh, you may choose. So in category type, category type, you have here browse applications. If you click to these browse applications, uh, you can see that it is not only dealing with English language teaching. So we have here art, astronomy, biology, chemistry, economy, engineering, and so on. You, you can see that it is not only dealing with the English language. So a um, wide variety of resources and uh, worksheets and uh, online worksheets. So uh, in browse worksheets, you may choose one of them and you may download any, uh, not downloading, I would say that. It is uh, online worksheets, so you may play them online without downloading. And in search in application, you may search any anything that you want, and uh, you will have different um, choices here. You may choose and uh, play. You are free. Again, here, if you are a teacher, if you want to create your application, you should uh, sign up to this site too. So you should create here your own account. Without creating an account here, uh, you can't create any application. So first of all, teachers should create account here. It's free. I would say that it is free and you are free to use all the options of this site. So you create the uh, application. Here, uh, just a um, limited uh, part of these uh, tasks. You Here you have multi matching pairs, group as an uh, assignment, number line, simple order, uh, closed test, multiple choice, and so on. So beforehand, uh, I'm a teacher, I have an idea. For example, uh, we had a history lesson, we learned about uh, Neolithic period, or let's say we learned about inventions. So what do I do? I have an idea, I want to make a quiz, I want to make a task uh, related to history. Uh, I have an idea, I want uh, to make, um, for example, let's say number line uh, in history that is very useful, number line. So I, first of all, I have an idea. Then I pick a template like this one. I chose, for example, number line. And later on, I pressed on number line. For example, let's uh, assume that I'm, I want to create this one. I have here examples. So example one, example two, and example three, and more examples. And this slide shows me that, okay, you have this uh, example. So by looking at this example, you may create your own. And after looking and exploring this, uh, the options of these um, examples, and then you click on the create new application. So what do you do? You create new application. This window opens. You may write here, you should write here, application title. What is the name of your title? If you want to add description to your title, you are adding description. If you don't, you are free. You don't have to put any description here. And as we have here number line, you should put here the number. What is the beginning and what is the end? What is the minimum and what is the maximum? And by filling all these bars, by filling all these things, in the end, uh, you are creating your uh, task. And what is the um, good side of this side is that you are previewing, preview uh, option. It has a preview option. So what do you do in preview option? You have created, you are not sure that you have done everything correctly or incorrectly. So in preview option, you are checking it. Okay, so you are looking, uh, if you don't like some parts, you may go back and correct the parts that you don't like. Okay, so the preview part is great here. So you have a look at your task, what is it, what it's missing, and later on you may go back and uh, fix some um, missing parts. And if you are finished with this one, you are done. Okay, so you are saving this, that uh, task. So this is my page and I've created here some options, uh, some uh, task types. So um, I will just, uh, I want to show you one of them. So uh, for example, I did it uh, together why, with my elementary group at CELTER. I prepared this task for them. 
and it was a part of reading uh, activity. So it is a closed test. I took some words from here and uh, how it looks like. For example, it looks like this. For example, uh, here I have uh, three options. I added three options. So when you click on it, you have by hand, customer, or historic. You choose one of them. And uh, you continue like this, filling these four options. And later on, you have here tick button as you can see here on the right uh, corner we have tick button they are ticking and checking our answers okay and i can see that my answers all my answers are correct and uh, it shows like it great everything is correct and i just press okay and i'm done with this uh, task so uh, you may create this kind of tasks and uh, you may present them to your students and uh, they may uh, i'm definitely sure that uh, they will like it whether it is online as i said or in class and and this is another option i created in this um this task for my um upper intermediate uh, group and at CELTA2, we had the topic, a grammar topic, a causative. And after explanatory explanation part, uh, I gave them uh, this um, task to do. So uh, we played here Millionaire. It was a game Millionaire. So you can create Millionaire a game here too. Uh, and uh, by I divided the class into two groups and uh, it was um, quite interesting even for the upper intermediate uh, students so it's uh, just one example it's one photo from that lesson that I applied this application so um, this is from learning uh, dot uh, or learning apps dot orgs so um, I will just, uh, in order not to waste uh, too much time, I will, uh, in the end, show some um, games, game sites that I used in my real uh, classes and also online classes. I will show them you some options and some images from this game, and I think that will be done uh, with this webinar. So, ESLgamesplus.com. Uh, Here you have classroom games, memory games, lots of opportunities, lots of options, spelling games uh, or interactive board games, hangman, jeopardy. If you explore the inside of this site, I am sure that most of you did already. It's great for especially primary year students or you know, some uh, secondary year students. So it's a great site. You may use all the options of the day are ready, ready-made uh, games uh, and here with my kids with my students we played this game uh, it was about uh, countable or uncountable nouns and and as you can see all of them gather inside um, in front of the board and they like this game especially kids they like these games and uh, here uh, countable uncountable nouns here it's a competitive game so we can see it's a kind of rally uh, so every we have five cars and five students so uh, as they answer the questions the uh, uh, the card that is uh, succeeded and it goes faster than others and in the end of this game one of our students uh, uh, Rauf he became champion and he won the game and uh, congratulations uh, to him and it was a great uh, green game and we I, I quite often use this game at my classes because we have all the time we are all the time uh, speaking in English and uh, sometimes we have to uh, draw the students attention to the lesson in order not to get them bored so uh, you can use this aslgamesplus.com and uh, this one, I want just in the end, uh, we want to summarize my webinar with this um, site. So it is not uh, actually interactive site, but um, I've advised uh, all the teachers to use this site. Uh, it's not only related to English language, it is um, related to math, uh, to grammar, to reading, to writing. But uh, what option you can use here? You can use here spelling, worksheets maker so uh, for example let's say that um, in your students book you have five words 
and uh, you want the students to learn these five words. So nowadays, in our in our uh, country, the books don't have any definition, uh, any translation. So all the words are you should uh, present these all the words with their definitions. And how can I can you make the uh, students to memorize these words better? So one of them is uh, creating spelling worksheets. So this is a spelling worksheets maker. You can. Um, just it's quite simple uh you can just type here the word that you want to make for example you are writing your run and here you write just one sentence uh, where you use this word and the definition and later on the word number two words three words 10 12 it depends uh till 14 yeah, it depends on you so um you are writing just words sentences and uh, definition that's all and later on you press the button create and this kind of worksheets it's just one part of this worksheet i did it with my students uh, it's just one page of it here you can see scramble words um, unscramble the words here and students uh, write down the words here and what is the um, why do I advise this side to the student and to the teachers? Because it um, helps the students remember words better. So by using these words in various contexts, uh, in uh, various situations, in various task types, they can memorize them better. So uh, you can see the words here, urban, incredible, rural area, they are quite difficult words for, for my third graders. And we learned them um, in, in, third, in the third grade. So how can I make it more memorable? I did this kind of a worksheet, a spelling worksheet. So first of all, they unscramble it. I have shown that just a few samples, a few pages. It, is, it automatically creates 10, 12 pages. So um, here, and what is the important and the interesting part that you don't have to uh, check all of them by hand. The answers are automatically under the worksheet. So students do the task, and later on they can see their mistakes, and you don't have to collect the copy books and, uh, or worksheets and check them. They automatically, by themselves, um, they check their uh, answers. And another option, the same words as you can see here, but now they are using it uh, in your word search, word find. So they will find these words inside of this word file. So what I did, I just wrote the word, I just wrote the definition, and I just wrote the sentence. That's all. All the, the site itself creates all these task types. It, it um, gives, gives you the ready-made uh, worksheet with your words, with the words that you need in your real classes. And here another one, uh, you can see here these options and here filling in the missing letters and that's all. So um, it was, uh, I have uh, actually more uh, uh, application and resources for you. I think that you will get them uh, when uh, you will download download the slides. You may get familiar with the number of them, uh, with more options and with more uh, resources too. So, Eva, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm with you. Just uh, I was listening to you and thinking, when will you stop? Because you have so much of information to share with us. Thank you very much. Actually, I was writing some ideas. I divided my paper into two parts and I decided to do it like what I'd like to use later on and what I know for this time. And actually, uh, I have more application to use later. So actually today, I I'm going to give a try to several of them. And I I'm sure that for tomorrow, my lessons will be more engaging and interesting for my students. Yeah, guys, I do hope that it was really useful for you. And I saw that some of participants joined us. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I can't pronounce the name correctly, but I see your hello from Saudi Arabia. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us, actually. And now I'm going to send you the link uh, to that marathon I told you about. Just don't forget to go 
and to register for that marathon. Parvina, I'd like to tell you thank you. And we have uh, those comments like thanks for the info. Thanks, Miss um, Alana. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for you. Yeah, I'm grateful for you for joining us and for being here. Yeah, and I know yeah, that I'm grateful to all of you. As we agreed, Parvina will send us her presentation. There she will include all yeah, that yeah. information she has already shared with you. And as yeah. far as I understood, you are going to include some more to add some more information. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, and then we will send you that presentation with the email. Actually, I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. Uh, and if I understood correctly, just in case people have some kind of questions, where can they find you just to get some kind of counseling? Uh, I didn't get, can you repeat? How can we contact you just in case we have some kind of questions? Where can I find you? Where can participants find uh, you? Yeah, on, on my slide, I added there my Facebook account and my Instagram account. If you want, I may add the email account too. So if you have any other, you may. So you are, you can feel free to write. Uh, yes, maybe we'll get some with the sites that I listed there. Um, I will add my. You are welcome. Uh, just quite nervous because of the some problem. Yeah. Explains some. Yeah. Okay. So actually, we have lots of comments. Uh, Miss Ina, thanks a lot. She wrote that she is looking forward to your email. Yeah, really, guys. I I don't want to tell you bye. You know. It's, such a wonderful connection between Ukraine and Azerbaijan. And also we have lots of teachers from Ukraine and Azerbaijan today, as well as Saudi Arabia, yes. as I mentioned before. So let's see each other on our marathon. I do hope that Pervina will join us as a participant. And uh, actually, guys, when you will be watching that marathon, don't forget to type your comments. Don't forget to share your contacts. Of course, I, I do not think that it's great to share something like emails or phone numbers. Yeah. Box, but you, yeah, but you can always share your Facebook accounts or Instagram accounts, how to find you, how to contact with you. How Actually, we'll have also our official hashtag. And when you post something about uh, our marathon, then you press hashtag and you can find all other participants and you can connect, contact each other, just establish some kind of international projects. By the way, guys, now when we are teaching online, I think that it's really easy to go to observe each other's lesson if you, lessons if you want, just to pick yeah. up some new ideas, to see how other teachers do, do it. Um, so I'm struggling with this online teaching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's another option too. So guys, tomorrow you will get that email with Pervina's um, presentation. Uh, we would be yeah. more than happy if you can type something like a feedback on this webinar. I'm sure Pervina spent lots of time just preparing all that information be, for you, just to show everything step by step. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, and what do you if you want to write some kind of your feedback, don't forget to tag SR Teaching and Learning on Instagram or on Facebook, and we will add your feedback on our official pages, like mentioning your name, your ideas, your words. So thanks a lot. And I do hope see you on May 30. Bye-bye, guys. Have a good so, evening yeah. and productive teaching. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll be there. Bye-bye.